In this tutorial, we will focus on this 3D rendered view here in the 3D imaging module of Plan Megaromexis software. So uh, let's take a look at how we can manipulate and adjust uh, this view. And so in uh, most of our uh, 3D imaging submodules, uh, besides these uh, slice views that uh, represent uh, the actual uh, data, we have also this 3D rendered view uh, that is nice uh, 3D visualization of the data. So uh, this view could help us, for example, if I activate these planes uh, here uh, in the view, I could understand better my data. So I could understand better from where uh, these slice views are taken from uh, in the volume. Also, of course, uh, we could use this nicely for patient education. So here, for example, I have also this 3D facial photo uh, pro-face uh, on top of the CBCT data. So we have a more uh, natural uh, representation of the patient's data. And naturally, I could plan my treatment. I have here already a nerve. I could add dental models, implants, uh, so on. And uh, I could build here my uh, virtual patient uh, with all the information nicely uh, in this one view. And uh, if we wouldn't need uh, the 3D rendered view uh, on this workstation, so if we wouldn't uh, need to use uh, the processing power of the computer for, for this view, there's an option here in the admin module that lets us uh, hide uh, this 3D rendered view in this workstation. So that's also possible. And uh, let's firstly take a look at a couple of uh, controls uh, that we have uh, here as well as uh, uh, in the other views. So also this 3D rendered view we can maximize uh, on the whole uh, image viewing area uh, by using this first button here or we could minimize it back. And uh, then secondly if we would like to get a 2D image of what we see here uh, we could use this camera icon. So now a 2D image of this uh, got saved here in the 2D imaging module uh, for the patient. Let's then hide uh, the pro face for a while. So I'll use this eye icon here and let's focus completely on this uh, uh, CBCT data instead. So let's first see uh, how we can manipulate this. So I can use my mouse wheel uh, in order to zoom in and out uh, the volume. Here uh, we don't need to worry whether our toggle zoom is activated or not. Uh, the mouse wheel works for zooming uh, all the time. And then uh, I can keep my uh, left uh, mouse button down and move uh, the volume around. And here um, in the uh, 5.3 version, we will also have uh, these quick uh, orientation buttons for the data. So just with one click, I could uh, view the data from uh, left, uh, front and right. So that's, uh, that's also possible. And uh, if I would like to panorate uh, the volume here uh, around, I can either keep my mouse wheel or uh, both mouse buttons down and I can just track uh, the volume around. And then uh, for the right uh, mouse button, uh, we can use that uh, for centering the data. So for example, if I would like to have this incisor uh, in the middle of the 3D rendered view, I could just click that uh, with my right mouse button. So that centers. Uh, the volume so that uh, the point that I right clicked uh, will be in the center of the 3D rendered view. And then one more uh, control here is that uh, if I would like to crop uh, the volume here uh, so I would like to see uh, what's inside, I can keep my right mouse button down and I can move my mouse uh, from the bottom uh, towards top. So right mouse button down and moving the mouse across uh, the screen will crop the volume so that I can see uh, what's inside. I can view the nerve canal, I can view the roots and if I have any objects like implants I can also see them better. And if I now move my volume around uh, the cropping level stays there. And I can uh, reduce the cropping uh, or close it uh, again by keeping my right mouse button down and this time moving the mouse uh, from the top uh, towards bottom. Let's then uh, take a look at uh, rendering uh, modes available. So this wrench-like icon here that is viewport settings uh, for the slice views. Uh, here uh, we can get a list of uh, rendering uh, options available. 
So different rendering options might help us in uh, seeing better uh, some anatomies uh, that we would be interested in. So we can just simply toggle between these different uh, rendering options by clicking them here uh, on the list. And uh, I have here now this X-ray shaded with the highlighted border and that means that this is my default uh, rendering mode. So always when I open this module, my data gets uh, opened uh, with this uh, rendering mode by default. And if I would like to prefer, um, if I would like to have some other uh, rendering mode instead as, as a default, I could uh, right click on top of that and I could uh, select this set as default preset so that then, then uh, the data would be opened with that uh, rendering mode uh, instead. And here in this small dialog uh, we have also the option of changing uh, the resolution um, of, uh, of the rendered view. So if I click here uh, where we see normal we get the small drop down uh, with different uh, resolution options uh, available. So I could select uh, uh, low resolution for example or if I would like to have uh, very nice uh, images for example I could uh, select this very high uh, for a while. It takes a little bit more uh, processing power uh, with the higher resolution and naturally uh, this uh, rendered view uh, can be adjusted also so here uh, in the toolbar under 3D rendering we have a couple of sliders contrast, uh, brightness um, that, that we can use for adjusting the view. We have also the volume uh, transparency. Then uh, this third slider here is a threshold slider. Uh, so with this we can adjust uh, which all densities uh, we will be uh, viewing uh, of the data. So if I move my uh, slider here uh, to the left uh, we can see all the data that was captured. So we can see this cylinder uh, containing also uh, the soft tissue and if I start moving this slider uh, to the right uh, we get rid of the softer tissues until just uh, the harder ones are left and finally uh, all the data uh, will be hidden. So now we only see our nerve here. And uh, there's also other option for uh, adjusting uh, the rendering. So if I open this uh, histogram or adjust levels here. I can uh, adjust the contrast and brightness uh, by tracking these red lines here. So this uh, is a representation of all the uh, intensity values uh, in the data. And I could grab this uh, green uh, line in order to adjust uh, gamma. And uh, here on, on top of this dialog we have also this uh, drop down uh, with all uh, different uh, coloring modes uh, available. So I could um, uh, change the coloring and here with these buttons I could uh, scale uh, the histogram. And uh, if I always prefer uh, some certain types uh, of uh, manual adjustments uh, that I have uh, made uh, onto data, it's possible uh, to have that also as a default uh, preset. So. Uh, uh, if I have, uh, after I have uh, made um, uh, the adjustments, I could click here on add. So then I could have this, uh, how, how I see the data visualized here, I could have that as, as one preset uh, that could be selected. So uh, if I write here, for example, new preset and click OK, I can now see uh, the new preset here uh, on the bottom of the list. So that one I could also then select or, or set, set as default. Let's uh, then take a look at how we can uh, view uh, soft tissue here. So uh, like you maybe noticed we have also a preset for that here uh, available. So I could click on this. Okay, uh, we have a small volume so we don't have an interesting soft tissue outline here. Uh, but this is uh, how we can see uh, the soft tissue or then another option is also uh, to use uh, these uh, soft tissue uh, outlines here. So uh, I could see uh, either just uh, the soft tissue uh, outline and here by the way I could uh, change uh, the color also uh, from, from this icon here. Or then uh, other option is also the view 
uh, not, not only the soft tissue outline, uh, but the full soft tissue. And here, for example, we could now uh, hide uh, the hard tissue. So that is um, uh, the bone. So I could use this slider that we were using earlier. And here, uh, like you see, uh, we have uh, the soft tissue and we could see, for example, uh, the cavities uh, better. And uh, here, if I actually, if I uh, use this drop down, I could uh, get to, to adjusting uh, just the soft tissue. And let's uh, quickly take a look at what uh, other uh, options uh, for the 3D rendering uh, we have here. So we have a couple of uh, different uh, visualization possibilities. Firstly, we could uh, change here uh, the light direction. So this might be nice if we would be uh, adjusting the type of uh, image that we would be taking, for example, for a presentation. Let's take a look at uh, this uh, a little bit later. This one we already saw. So from here, uh, we can activate either uh, all of the slice uh, view planes, or then we can activate just one of them uh, when necessary. Then we can view uh, what are the boundaries uh, of the volume uh, here uh, in the 3D rendered view. <coughs> we can adjust uh, uh, the perspective. So uh, we could change that to more uh, natural uh, representation and uh, soft tissues we already viewed and the color changing for soft tissue. This one smooths uh, the data. So it changes the rendering a little bit. And then here uh, we have this enhanced uh, depth view. So this is also one visualization mode here. Uh, the parts that are sort of like uh, closest uh, to the viewer are represented in warmer uh, tone and then uh, those more distant, distant parts uh, get the blue uh, coloring so that it better uh, communicates us uh, which parts uh, like uh, or it enhances uh, the 3D uh, characteristic uh, of the volume. And then we have one more uh, function here for cleaning uh, the 3D rendering. So uh, with this one, uh, we can uh, remove uh, parts of the 3D rendering, for example, uh, some artifacts uh, caused by metal. And uh, let's uh, first uh, change uh, the background color uh, for the 3D rendered view. I'll open this uh, dialog uh, from here uh, with the wrench-like icon. And then here, uh, we have the option for changing the background color. So I'll click here on this black box and uh, I select a lighter uh, shade so that we can better uh, see how the 3D rendered view looks like. And uh, then let's activate uh, this clean rendering tool. Uh, so here uh, we can remove uh, parts of the 3D uh, rendered data. Uh, we can keep Alt down uh, when the tool is active so that we can move uh, the volume around. And here uh, we need to be careful because everything that is uh, uh, behind the cursor, behind this eraser, uh, will be removed. So for example, uh, like this, uh, we would get the hole uh, in the rendering uh, if we would uh, clean there. Uh, luckily, there's an undo button also. So here in this small dialog, we can have undo, redo, and revert uh, will uh, cancel all this. Uh, cleanings uh, even even after uh, closing the patient first and, and, and opening it uh, for another session later. And uh, here we can also uh, adjust uh, the size of the tool uh, cursor by keeping our right mouse button down and by moving our mouse uh, up and down on the screen. So then we can uh, clean some uh, finer details as well. And uh, another way for um, uh, cropping the volume um, is, uh, is to use this uh, crop volume uh, function. So uh, we have this one uh, icon here uh, under adjust. And if I activate this, uh, we're able to uh, draw here uh, in any of these slice views uh, uh, a cube and that determines uh, what part of the 3D rendering will be displayed here uh, in the 3D rendered view. And I can adjust uh, this cropping here in any of these uh, slice views. So this uh, only 
applies uh, on the 3D rendering, uh, not on the slice views, uh, but we could, for example, uh, use uh, the normal export uh, volume option uh, for uh, exporting uh, this uh, part of the data as a separate volume. So we could, for example, save that to the database so that we could save uh, this smaller uh, volume for the patient. And uh, we can uh, reset uh, the cropping uh, from this reset view here. And finally, um, let's take a look at uh, different uh, objects uh, that we can have in the data. So I had here uh, also some uh, uh, dental model and uh, some segmented uh, teeth uh, hidden. So, uh, uh, like I said, uh, we can see the objects also here uh, in the 3D uh, rendered view. And uh, the visibility of the objects uh, we can um, adjust uh, from here, uh, from the object browser. Or then uh, there's also this button uh, that I skipped in the previous uh, description uh, for hiding all the overlay uh, from the volume at once. So then we would only have the raw data. Or we could put that back. And OK, now also ProFace uh, came visible. And uh, it's also possible to uh, move uh, the objects here uh, in the 3D rendered view. OK, let me maximize uh, uh, this again. So I could, uh, for example, select uh, the segmented tooth. And now we see that a boundary uh, came here uh, around it. So uh, this object is active. And now if I keep control and shift down on my keyboard, I could grab this object with my left mouse button and I could move it uh, to a different location. So left uh, mouse button for moving. And then if I still keep my control and shift down and I use my right mouse button, I can rotate uh, the object. So this works. And uh, this works for the objects uh, that we have here uh, in the list. So dental models uh, and uh, segmented teeth and uh, so on. And then naturally, um, like we already uh, saw, we have this slider for uh, hiding uh, to data. So for example, if I would have here uh, implant or a dental model, uh, so I could, I could better maybe understand, for example, how uh, how close uh, the other objects are uh, to the nerve or how uh, the uh, implant plan looks like uh, when I hide uh, the CBCT data.